Hey everyone, in today's video we are going to talk about some April themed activities that you can do with your kindergarten, first, or second grade students. Now each and every month I do like to make a little video like this with some fun themes that you can kind of just sprinkle into your regular teaching just to make things a little bit more fun. I do have four different themes and activities I'm going to share in this video, so if you're ready give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. Starting at the beginning of the month, April 1st is April Fool's Day. Now, generally speaking, I don't do too much for April Fool's Day, but there are a cute, you know, harmless pranks you could play on your students. There's the classic brownies one. Now, this one has been all over the internet for a while, but essentially you tell your class that you brought them in brownies, and then you open up your little sheet here to display that you actually have a bunch of brownies. Your kids will probably be a little disappointed, but it's pretty harmless, and again, it goes with like the K through 2 humor. They'll think it's funny and they'll get it. Another harmless prank I like to do is this word search right here. Now this is an April Fool's Day word search by Elizabeth Delk and you can actually grab it on TBT and basically it says that it is a springtime word search with all these different words to find and you can just give it to students for fun, let them know we're going to do a little spring word search and students will realize that they actually can't find any of the words in the word search because they're not there. Again, that's just a fun little harmless one. And then once students realize that the words aren't there, you can say April Fools and print out another quick little spring word search that they can actually complete. Now, something I do usually do on April Fools Day is I will give them a little literacy activity. Here I have my close reading passage all about April Fools Day. And students find it really interesting how different countries celebrate this silly holiday differently. For instance, in England, people do play tricks on one another, but you're actually only supposed to do it until noon. It's like afternoon, the holiday is over. And then the funny one in France is that children would sneakily run around with a uh, paper fish and they would try to stick it on the back of adults as a trick. And instead of running away and yelling April fools, they yell April fish. Every time I tell someone that, I feel like that story is like an April Fool's joke and I'm like the fool just sharing it, but it is real from everything I've gathered. So I do have that close reading passage. I have that for a bunch of holidays and with each one it comes with a little vocabulary sheet for students to go back and define some vocabulary as well as some text dependent questions that they have to go back into the text and answer. I actually sell that over on TPT, so I will link that down in the description, but it's just a fun way to kind of intertwine literacy and the holiday and teach kids something new. April activity number two is to teach your students all about frogs. Now, why do we teach our students about frogs? Well, no real reason other than it is now springtime and it's a fun question to ask your students, where did all the frogs go during winter, right? Where did they go? Frogs have some interesting tactics for surviving the winter and while many of them will go ahead and burrow and hibernate, others will actually freeze themselves. SciShow Kids has a really cool video on freezing frogs. It looks like this. I will link it down in the description but each month I like to teach my students about some nonfiction facts and animals is a fun one. So in April you can teach them a little bit about frogs. I like to do it using um, this Gail Gibbons book. I use this book a lot when I am teaching my nonfiction uh, writing unit because I'll use this as like my model where I learn about frogs and then I write about them. But you can read a book like this. There's tons of different frog books out there. National Geographic has a few. And then you can show them that SciShow Kids video and have them write some facts that they learned about frogs. Learning about frogs could easily be plugged in as a quick little science or reading or writing activity, but it's just an engaging one where again, students are learning nonfiction facts that are pretty cool and then writing about them. I always also like to add a little directed drawing to this as well. Here is one I found from a site called Easy Peasy and Fun. It is just a cute little frog directed drawing, but you can Google frog directed drawing for kids and find a ton of them on YouTube and just ones that you can actually draw on the board for them to follow. Of course, if you want to teach about frogs even longer, feel free. You don't want to just do a little mini lesson here and there. You can also go ahead and incorporate uh, Frog and Toad. You can bring some fiction versus nonfiction in there. And SciShow Kids also has a video about frogs versus toads. Very classic for comparing animals. 
things like that. The third theme to think about in April is of course poetry. All of April is poetry month and usually during the month of April we really try to focus on reading and writing all sorts of poetry. I'm not going to talk too much about it here because I actually have these other videos that I've already shared in the past on poetry month that are very very helpful. This one right here is how to teach writing poetry in five easy steps and that is a great one for kindergarten first and second grade teachers. Just walking you through the steps I take when teaching poetry to my kids and what types of poetry I like to teach and then I also have this one right here this is an older video um, and I did it as an end of the year classroom project but it shows you how to make collaborative classroom poetry where students can each have um, a line in the poem and it's just a really sweet keepsake for them to keep. If you're interested in either of those videos I will go ahead and link those down in the description for you to check out. And last but not least theme number four in April to teach about is Earth Day. Earth Day falls on April 22nd every single year, and I've already made two videos about Earth Day, this one right here talking about trees, and this one right here for how to teach your kids about recycling. In both of those videos, I have some freebies that I share with you. This one right here is my Tell Me Tree craft that I like to make after teaching students the importance of trees and how they help us here on Earth. And then I also shared this recycling sort right here that you can do with your students after you teach them all about the three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle. So there you have a roundup of four fun and easy April themed activities that you can use in your K through two classroom. As always, all of the ideas and freebies and everything mentioned in here will be linked down in the description. That way, if you are looking for anything, you can go down there and grab it. I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.